It's rather a beautiful idea that a restless, geologically active planet will give rise to cells, will inevitably give rise to life in the end. Organic molecules are, are made of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen, with nitrogen and sulfur and other things added on. We tend to then think of these molecules almost as building bricks, and maybe that's not the best way of seeing it because, you know, we are large objects, but the thing that really makes us alive is the flux going on underneath it that we can't really see. So you have to start with a, with a world which is just chemistry and geology. Uh, and you need to think, well, which bits of that world are going to be important? And you need to finish with a cell which, which has got membranes, it's got molecular machines, it's got DNA and heredity and so on. How can we break this journey down into bite-sized chunks that we can kind of grapple with? Probably the beginning of the scientific way of thinking about it really goes back to the Milliuri experiment in 1953. If you've got an atmosphere a bit like Jupiter full of methane and ammonia and hydrogen and so on, and you have electrical storms in that atmosphere, uh, then you, you will get amino acids, the building blocks of proteins. And at the time, people thought they were the building blocks of life. It's a really important idea because it showed that you can do simple experiments to ask these questions questions in the lab. I think that the community has really come a long way in understanding the processes that are necessary for life's origin and the types of environments that may have been involved. Things like hydrothermal vents or hot springs or volcanic settings. For example, in Yellowstone National Park, you can see hot springs. In, say, Hawaii, where you have lava erupting underwater, these can be seen on Earth today, though the chemistry is very different than it would have been four billion years ago. Another important idea, which is the one that I would subscribe to, is down at the bottom of the oceans in deep sea hydrothermal vents where you've got this continuous flow, this continuous energy flow, kind of animating everything from the very beginning. I don't think we agree with each other yet about what the answer might be. So there's lots of debates, discussions, arguments, and that's what science is about. The chemical garden experiments that we do, we actually simulate in lab what these environments might have looked like on other planets or on the early Earth, and how could those have functioned in a world before life began. Some recent findings in planetary science are really exciting for origin of life scientists because we've found that some of these ocean worlds, like the icy moons of Jupiter and Saturn, they have oceans underneath their ice shells, and they, those oceans may be in contact with a rocky layer, which means you could start getting that vent formation process like we see on Earth. If we could find an answer to how life emerged on Earth from a geological or chemical process, it would be very relevant to looking for life elsewhere because it would give us a sense of how likely it is for another world to have had these conditions. It would give us sort of a target to look for. It's hard to say whether it's likely or not that we would find life elsewhere. Certain things like the generation of amino acids are pretty easy to do and you can do it in a lot of different ways. But other, other types of things, being able to synthesize some organic molecules but also having those be able to replicate themselves. And then finally, having a way to transfer energy and basically do the types of things that biological metabolism does. And it's even more complicated to imagine in life today, these are all linked. And so how do we get them to link together in the origin of life to function without the biological system? The more of these experiments you tick off, if you like, the more you realize, it, you know, we're on the point of understanding it, if not of proving it. Life is the right atoms and molecules arranged in the right way, but those ways are amazingly self-assembling. I would say life at the level of bacteria is a property of a planet. Any geologically active, wet, rocky planet, I think will give rise to life.